Hi, my name is Carl Medlock, and welcome. We are the first electric vehicle repair shop in the world. And I started this shop after I left Tesla in 2013. And I didn't start it on purpose, but you can that's the story for another time. You can Google my name or YouTube. You'll find out the videos about us. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm from Medlock and Sons. We are myself and my three sons. We fix mostly Teslas and primarily Tesla Rosers, and we have about 45 of them here today. We have lots of phone calls for Leafs and Priuses. We don't work on Priuses here at all. Uh, we work on a few Leafs. We work on the EV Smart Car. We work on the Mercedes B-Class, basically because I own both of those. So you're thinking about buying a used electric car. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the th critical things. I want to, I'm not going to talk about paint or vehicle name brand or fit and finish or any of those things. What I'm going to talk about is what's going to cost you money, and that's the battery. I'm going to talk about charging. I'm going to talk about a few of the cars that we're aware of that we work on. You know, in uh, I think it was like 2010, there were probably you know 19,000 EVs sold. In 2021, there were 6.6 .6 million electric cars sold. Tesla, just yesterday or the day before, reached their 2 millionth car built. Think about that. Sitting in this room, which you cannot see, are some early, early Teslas. So we have VIN 57 here, VIN 78, VIN 79, VIN 87, a lot of VIN 94, a lot of really low numbers. And you think about that today, there's 2 million out on the road. Back in 2009, when the Tesla Roadster came out, we discovered after looking at the data that most people drove less than 50 miles a day. So that kind of narrows down the scope of what electric car you might be looking for. There's a couple things that you need to think about. One is range. For every kilowatt, you know, because Nissan offers a 53 kilowatt battery or a 40 kilowatt battery. Anyway, the Tesla Roadster originally was a 53 kilowatt battery and that's 244 miles. So basically if you're every kilowatt, you're going to get uh, 4.6 miles of range. So keep that in mind, do the math in your head or when you're going to look at one of these new EVs or a used one. But what I want to talk about is battery cooling, battery maintenance, and the cost of repairs. I'm going to give one, a couple of examples. Today I had a phone call. I'm just using it because I get these calls all the time, a couple a day. Uh, the guy was, uh, he owned a Ford uh, Focus EV, I think it was. And um, he went to Ford to get a new battery and they wanted $10,000. Well, the car was worth about $7,000, so that basically totals out the car, right? Not worth fixing. Uh, so that's, that's a problem. You really need to know about the battery quality of the car before you buy it. Cause you can buy a car from an unscrupulous car lot and they'll tell you the battery is fine and it's not fine. You really, I highly recommend, I don't care if you're buying it from me or you're buying it from anybody else, my sister, my brother, my family, a car dealer, a used car dealer, go get a vehicle inspection from the manufacturer. If you're buying a Nissan Leaf, take it to a Nissan dealer and get that car checked out. Find out what the battery quality is, how much degradation there is in the battery. I mean, we have uh, at least a couple of Nissan Leafs floating around here. They started out with 125 miles of range. They charged up to about 50. There are a lot of Model S's right now, 2012, 2013s, that are needing batteries. With uh, 2012 and 2013 Model S's that actually need batteries. The battery cost for a 2012-2013 Model S, depending on whether you have a P60 or P90 or P65, P75, P100, all of those choices, they start about $13,000 to $15,000 and they go up from there. That's uh, that's a critical uh, thing to think about because there are a lot of Model S's 2012 and 2013 on the market right now that either are charging up to 100 miles, 150 miles because of the batteries have been overheated. Let me talk about that next. The one thing that you should be concerned about is where you live, what region you live in, and how much energy is used because the batteries have to maintain themselves. So it's using up its own energy to keep itself warm and cold in an optimum temperature. So a Nissan Leaf has zero cooling capabilities. And I'm not saying Nissan Leafs are bad. We have a couple of them here. They're fantastic vehicles. We haven't had any trouble. Um, it's one of my favorite electric cars, actually, because they just don't seem to break around here. Um, maybe we're in a great climate. We're in Seattle, Washington. You know, heat is a real problem for, for lithium-ion batteries. The, the hotter the battery gets for a longer period of time, you know, it degrades the range by pretty quickly. And I'll give you one story about that. In 2009, a Tesla Roadster was delivered here in Seattle, and the, the uh, owner of the, the car took it to the racetrack. He wanted to see what it would do. The car charged to 244 miles. He went to the racetrack, and back then the firmware on the car would not, uh, it would let you reset the alert if the battery was getting hot. And he'd reset it a few times, let it cool down, reset it a few times. But he kept getting the battery hot that, that entire day. When he got home, his car only charged to 175 miles. 
And you know what? That car's actually here today, and it still charges to about 150 miles. The battery was hurt the very just a few days after he purchased the car. So that's that's what I'm getting at. Another thing you need to think about is who's going to repair this electric car? Are there any repair shops near you? Is there a dealer support network? So you need to find out if you're going to buy a Nissan Leaf, does that service center have a factory trained technician that can actually work on your car? Does that Ford dealership have a factory trained technician that can work on your, your new truck or car, whatever you're buying? Hyundai, Kia, all the ones, they're all coming out with EVs, but can they fix the car? General Motors had the EV1. They bought them all back. They took them away from people and they crushed them all. So GM, GM tiptoed their way into electric cars. They stepped right back out. In 2012 or so, I don't remember the exact year. You have to look it up yourself. Um, Toyota invested a bunch of money into Tesla. And they did a RAV4 EV. Great vehicle if you're looking for a little SUV that's older. They're hard to find, but they're really a nice little rig. Um, and it was Tesla drivetrain. Uh, there's also a Mercedes B-Class that is a Tesla drivetrain. And then there's, there's the Mercedes smart car that's a B-Class. But let me tell you something. Both Toyota and Mercedes backed out of their investment with Tesla, sold all their investment, and they backed out of electric cars. Only because Tesla started destroying the market, their market share and taking it did, they, did all these people start stepping back in. You've got the new Ford truck. You've got the Rivian. You've got the Lucid. One thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, what does kilowatt mean? The more kilowatt hours a battery has, the more energy it can store and the greater the car's range. You know, using the latest Nissan Leaf as, a, as an example, the, there's a 40 kilowatt, Leaf has a 40 kilowatt battery. Its official range is 168 miles. Okay, so 40 kilowatts, 168 miles. So that's the rate of the energy that is delivered to the drivetrain applied to the motor. Let's talk about distance. You need to determine how far you travel every day. What are your needs? How far are you going to go? Are you going to go, if you're just a city dweller like here in Seattle, the Nissan Leaf is fantastic because you can pretty much go anywhere in Seattle and get back without any issues. Let's talk about home charging. Level one charging, in my opinion, uh, there's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff on the internet and I haven't seen anything consistent, is 110. You can charge basically about 20 or 30 miles, maybe 40 miles a night on 110 volts. Um, level two, I think, is up to about 30 amps. And... You really should think about if you're going to charge your car either on free uh, charging or tra chargers around wherever you live. There's a lot of chargers at apartments and businesses all over the place. The level two 30 amps charges, uh, you know, 244 miles and 30 amps to charge your car in about four hours. Um, 70 amps, it's about two hours. Think about that. Your charging speed, whether the car's capable of handling that that volta voltage uh, and that amperage. The other thing you should probably think about is getting an inspection for uh, an electrical inspection at your home to make sure that you're capable of actually installing a charger. I have a couple of favorites. Early on at Tesla, they used a charger called a Clipper Creek. That's my favorite brand. But the reason I like Clipper Creek is the ones here are 12 years old, 10 years old, eight years old, and 100% still working. We have five Clipper Creek chargers in the shop and none of them have caused us any trouble. Not one of them. We, we don't have any issues. There are a lot of cars out there that you can purchase. There's the Nissan Leaf, used I'm talking about. There's the Nissan Leaf, there's the Mercedes EV smart car, there's Mercedes uh, B-Class, um, pretty uncommon cars. I've seen a couple of them on Carvana. They're pretty expensive, but they're, I own one. They're a really nice car to drive. They're just like, they're about the same size as the Leaf, a little bit bigger, a little bit fancier, nice audio, all of those things, but they only go, you know, 85 miles. For me, I drive five miles each way to work. I charge it up once a week. That's really good. The last thing I want to talk about is um, what to look for in the, in the, in the buyer's inspection. Um, number one, battery quality. Number two, if the car is behind, it has any recalls or any maintenance. Um, I highly recommend that if you buy an electric car, you get it inspected only at a specialty electric vehicle shop or only at the dealer because there's a lot of misinformation out there and nobody knows the cars as well as the manufacturers, technicians. My name's Carl Medlock. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll make another video pertaining to that. And I can tell you a lot more. Ask me, and I'll do it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.